It's exciting to be here, both of us. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, Lee had a great vision years ago <clears throat> when he first came here about CAA, about what it could mean. Susan Fagan grabbed it and ran with it. Susan Fagan has been the phenomenal leader in the development of Columbia Alumni Association. And there's just one person I want to recognize that's in the audience today that I always consider the founder of CAA. And if she doesn't mind just standing up and saying hello, Donna Rosenthal. Donna, where are you? Donna's heart, hard work, and spirit made this organization come together. When you go back and think about how successful it is today, and there were a lot of skeptics in those early days, different vertical groups in, in various schools that wanted to keep their own. And to try to combine this and put everything together so that we could do it, not just in the United States, and, and, but throughout the world. And it's been terrific. So we have a great opportunity today to put Lee Bollinger under the spotlight and ask him a few questions. So I've got a bunch of questions I'm going to start with so he can tell you about where we are. There's so many things in the, in the roughly 10 years, almost 10 years that he's been the president of the university is, I think all of you who have been around here a long time recognize <clears throat> the enormity of, of, of change. There's nothing that Lee looks at that he doesn't feel that he could make better. And, and we all benefit from that. He drives us all to, to greater heights, and I think some of the things that you'll hear from him today will give you some idea about how important he thinks and believes in the future of the university. So the first thing we did as trustees, not being completely stupid, but you, know, you never know, we, we signed Lee up to another contract uh, a year ago. So he is now on the second year of a new five-year contract going into his 10th year. What's that feel like to you now? <laughs> <laughs> it's, not too, it's too late to change your mind. <laughs> so that's a question. That's a question. <laughs> we want to know how you feel. Yeah. Okay, I can tell them how you feel. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so it, I think we all feel, just uh, like I do, that, that this is a fantastic time for the university. It's um, when you look at uh, how much we have to work with, uh, fantastic students and gifted, very distinguished faculty, wonderful administration, great trustees led by Bill. Uh, we have space for the first time in 100 years, I mean literally. We have the space to do what people at Columbia did at the beginning of the last century. And that was a time when Columbia was created as we know it today. And now that is the place in which we can create Columbia for this century. The resources are still challenged compared to our peers in terms of the endowment, but the performance on the endowment is better than any other university in the United States for the past five or six years. The giving, so, the giving is, is great. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's under, yeah. I'm going to pepper you with a bunch of questions. Great. So you're, great. I want to make sure. So, yeah. you know, I, you initiated a strategic analysis of where this university was in the, in the, among its peers. Called on some outside people to do some evaluation of where we were. From that, you developed the plan. And you developed the long-term plan that said we were going to get the university back in the top five. There are very few uh, groups out there that evaluate the performance of universities, but the one that makes a lot of sense to everybody is US News. This is our second year of being in the top five. We're number four. Reaction. So the, um, whenever the U.S. News and World Report r ranks you low, you don't pay any attention to it. And when it ranks you well, uh, you, 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 see, you really uh, say how great it is. Uh, you know, 
It, it's extremely important to the institution to be ranked uh, fourth uh, in the United States by U.S. News and World Report. I think all of us also realize that Colombia is among that handful of truly, truly great universities, both the history, uh, the present, and the future. So I would say, Bill, that, that you know, we have shared a view that the only reason for doing these jobs is to try to make this institution the very top uh, in, the, in the world. And that's a kind of commitment that's both fun, which is why I think people are here, uh, because a great institution to work with, and we are making progress on that. And I think that's just a sign of it. So, so there were a lot of components of this, this number four ranking for us. And, you know, you mentioned one just briefly. To, to take us a little deeper into the performance of the endowment and, and what you did when you came here, you know, underperforming fund, and, and you put the right people in place to make things happen. So we had two big problems at Columbia uh, that, that really helped uh, or could block our potential. One was space, and we'll come back to space and talk about uh, what we've done. And the other was resources. So sometime middle of the 20th century, the endowments of Harvard and Columbia were identical. And as we know, Harvard's endowment today is over 30 billion, and our endowment is now close to 8 billion. That's very important in terms of the resources of the institution. We have to try to make up uh, the difference because we want to be uh, the best university uh, in the world. Well, to do that, we have to have connected alumni. We have to have people who feel part of this. That's why we wanted to have a university-wide uh, alumni associate. That's why you're here. That's why Donna was there at the beginning when we raised this. Uh, and that's why this is working. We created a $4 billion capital campaign, the largest in Columbia's history by far, and then finished that goal a year early, despite the Great Recession, raised the goal, extended it to $5 billion. That's the largest campaign goal of any university in the United States. The endowment... That it counts pledges. If you just take actual dollars in every single year, we were 13th or 14th in the country uh, eight, nine years ago. We're now regularly three or four. We're always top five uh, in the actual giving every year. Those are very significant facts. And then, of course, we count on our professionals to take that money and to manage it very, very effectively. And this past year, the endowment returned 23.6%. Uh, the, you know, that is a tribute to Nar Narvikar and his team. It has nothing to do with Bill. It has... <laughs> it has or, or George. It has nothing, especially George. And it has, <laughs> has nothing, nothing to do with me at all. It is a fantastic performance. And in fact, over the past, I, I think it's six, seven years, it is, as I said, the highest performing endowment of any endowment over a billion dollars, university, foundation, or otherwise, in the United States. So you should know that the resources that are contributed, that are raised, that you help us raise, uh, are managed exceptionally well. Last thing I'd say is that 8 million versus 30, or the 8 billion versus 30 billion is still very real, but you have to remember that we live in New York City, and New York City is so attractive that that's worth about 15 to 20 billion dollars in an endowment. <laughs> So actually, our endowment's about 20, 25 billion, uh, and we're very close to Harvard's 30 billion. We like we like Lee's math. You know, you mentioned you mentioned the campaign, and and I think, rightly so. You know, the the effort that you've made to in, in that five-year plan that we had, there were a lot of people during very difficult times cut back development staff, and you saw, in fact, just the opposite. You and Susan and Fred Van Sickle went after it, hired more people, put them out throughout the world, and the results have been just fantastic. They really have. They really have. It is, uh, you know, it's a real tribute to Lee that he saw the opportunity. We've had uh, development alumni relations uh, organization as part of the trustees, and Richard Witten, who's here today, is the, is the um, chair of that, that committee. He worked so closely with Susan uh, 
and, uh, and Fred all during that time. But, you know, to see us in the top two or three on annual and to be as, as resourceful as we've been with our capital campaign, the fact is we extended it from $4 billion to $5 billion, as Lee indicated, and it's still going very strong. We had a, a report on that yesterday with the trustees.